Thank you very much, uh, ma'am, for this uh, introduction. My today's talk is on newer updates in pathophysiology, diagnosis, and outcomes in, in gestational diabetes. And uh, uh, my humble thanks to Bansi Bhai and his team of uh, Diacare Con. Possibly, I am one of the person coming in from the day one of inception of this meeting. Feel always feel an honored, and thank you very much on, from on behalf of the team. Hello, diabetes. I don't have any conflict of interest for this particular session. We'll have introduction, pathophysiology, screening and diagnosis of gestational diabetes. Outcome studies, uh, we have uh, uh, two important studies which I'll be discussing very much in brief and then recommendations and the carry home message. I feel everyone knows that every fourth or fifth women in your ANC clinic is likely to have some kind of hyperglycemia and pregnancy. 85% are going to be gestational diabetes which appears during pregnancy, disappears after delivery and rest, rest of the 15% might be either pre-existing type 1 diabetes, becoming pregnant, pre-existing type 2 diabetes, becoming pregnant. So every woman in India should be screened for it and this is an umbrella terminology which is called as hyperglycemia in pregnancy which is HIP which is again subdivided into two that is diabetes in pregnancy and GDM. DIP is those women who are already having pre-existing type 1 or type 2 diabetes diagnosis before the pregnancy but there will be a lot of good number of people because uh, we have, see the age of marriage is going up, age of pregnancy is going up and age of diabetes coming down and that's a mismatch. You have young women coming with pre-diabetes becoming GDM in during pregnancy, young women Pre-diabetic never ever being tested on that's why they have uh, been uh, diagnosed as a during during screening during uh, ANC clinic they are diagnosed to have diabetes so such cases are going to be in rise uh, on rise and this is called as DIP that is diabetes in pregnancy. My today's talk is restricted to GDM and pathophysiology and I'll stick, I'll stick to that. These are some terminologies which have been discussed during the debate yesterday. Conventional GDM, which is a typical GDM 20, after 24 weeks. Overt GDM, uh, overt diabetes, which is a, uh, which is a pre-existing diabetes, either known or then diagnosed during uh, during a screening. Early GDM, GDM, but before 24 weeks of pregnancy. Mild GDM between 120 to 140 after 75 gram glucose. After 140, you say GDM. Less than 120, you say normal. 120 to 140 is a borderline case which is called as, which is called as mild GDM. GDM uh, the definition has little change now. Diabetes diagnosed, diagnosed in the second or the third trimester of the pregnancy that was not clearly overt prior, over diabetes prior to the gestation is being, di is being defined by ADA. So uh, we have to, whenever I talk about GDM, we have to be little more uh, uh, thinking beyond uh, the co common thinking and we should know that it is not the GDM, it's not just the neonatal outcome, it's not congenital malformation, it is not stillbirth, it is not uh, macrosomia, it is not IUGR, much, much beyond that, that these offspring of diabetic mother are likely to become diabetic and develop obesity and cardiac disease in their adolescent as well as in the young adult life. And even these women are likely to become diabetes after delivery. So uh, we, we are taking care of two generations. So it's a, it's a vicious cycle of, of, J, of diabetes. You have a woman with GDM who is likely to deliver either a male or a female baby. If it is a female baby or male uh, gender, both of them are likely to become obese. Uh, when when uh, in, in their adolescent life, adult life, if she is woman, then she will again uh, uh, deliver a baby who is going to be little obese and this transgenerational transmission of a non-communicable disease continues and this vicious cycle have to be, have to be cut down by all of us as a clinician. So this transgenerational uh, transmission of disease or non-communicable disease is maternal obesity, fetal overnutrition, adolescent obesity, early onset type 2 diabetes, adult onset type 2 diabetes and metabolic syndrome and this will continue and this is to be taken care as a clinician by us. The health of the offspring and further generations depend upon the good metabolic health of the pregnant women even from the preconception phase targeting pregnancy related diabetes and breaking the vicious cycle of transgenerational transmission would be an effective and wholesome action 
to significantly bring down the expanding burden of diabetes and other non-communicable diseases. That's what we call it as primordial prevention before the baby is being born. See to it that the intrauterine environment is so much healthy and euglycemic that the baby doesn't recognize that the mother is diabetes. See the thought process of an author who has written this sentence. That the, the baby doesn't recognize that the mother is diabetes, then that's the best treatment of a, a, to, of a GDM women or HIP women for during their pregnancy. And if, if a blood glucose should is between 80 to 120 or 70 to 120 during pregnancy. There's another very novel uh, slide here. You have to focus on the preconception. It might have its impact of hyperglycemia on oocyte ma ma maturation, follicular development. During conception, fertilization, and embryo uh, 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 growth. Gestational and suckling period with critical time for window of maternal obesity. Uh, and, and the preconception period, even in men, is sperm cell maturation. So at various places, you have to be cautious of uh, targeting uh, the, these, these factors so that you prevent diabetes in, in long term. Gestational, so we have this, uh, this is another coronary calcium score here. If you just see, those who never had neither uh, norm, their today uh, normal glycemic and no history of GDM, versus those who have GDM and as well as developed diabetes. In between we have pre-diabetes, the no GDM but insulin diabetes and all different this. So if you are, if you are non-diabetic and no history of GDM, the coronary calcium score is still okay. And, 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 and if you have any of the risk factors, especially in developed diabetes, it's very high. So, so free of the coronary calcium score, if you, if you don't have diabetes and past history of GDM. So this is wonderful relationship which we need to respect it. Pathophysiology, we always say it's a chronic phase of insulitis. Your beta cells are already compromised and that is why when you, when you, when you become pregnant, these are the normal beta cells. You can see insulin, beta cells and the alpha cells. They are normal cells when you are euglycemic and pre-gestation. Once you become pregnant, once you there is a beat compensatory mechanism and hypertrophy and hyperplasia of the beta cells here if you can uh, you can see that alpha cells are as it is but this hyperplasia then becomes normal once you are delivered so pre return to pregestational biology and your beta cell hyperplasia comes back to normal this is normal physiology but what is happening in in gdm that this impaired compensatory mechanism, the hypertrophy or hyperplasia of the beta cells which are likely to happen in women who are, who are likely to develop GDM, it doesn't happen. And that's why I say that the, the, the beta cells are already diseased, that's why you develop GDM. So those beta cells who fail to supply this extra 50% insulin demand during pregnancy, they don't, they are unable to do that. And that's why you develop hyperglycemia after 75 gram glucose challenge test. And those, the others don't, don't develop it. So that is how it is. And then this becomes further detrimental. The detrimental effect on the beta cell because this is a, is a physiological stress to the beta cells. Pregnancy is a treadmill test of beta cells of pancreas. You can, if you this particular statement, you will never able to forget. It's a treadmill test for the beta cells of pancreas. And this treadmill test, after, after getting exposed to pregnancy, there is further deterioration in the beta cell function. And that is why these women, after, within one year, almost 20 to 30 percent will become G, uh, type 2 diabetes or diabetes. Within five years, 50 percent will become, uh, uh, will, will develop diabetes. And beyond five to 15 years, almost 90 percent of the GDM women will develop frank diabetes. And this is because of this compromise. I'll be a little brief now here. So fetal metabolism in normal pregnancy is characterized by facilitated insulin action in the first, first half of the pregnancy and then diabetogenic stress because of the placental hormone in the second part of the pregnancy. Now this facilitated anabolism in the first half is, is, with, is characterized by increased estrogen, progesterone, beta cell hyperplasia and increased insulin secretion which will reflect as insulin tissue, uh, uh, tissue glycogen storage decrease hepatic glucose production and peripheral glucose utilization is increased and that's why you have re if you have 10% reduction in the fasting blood glucose 
So during pregnancy, if you compare a woman, a fasting blood glucose during first trimester before 20 weeks versus the pre-pregnancy state, you will find 10% lower fasting blood glucose in these women. And metabolic changes due to this, you have hyperinsulinemia and it's an anabolic phase. So then net effect is the 10% uh, lower fasting glucose in this pregnant state due to increased plasma volume, increased fetoplasmental glucose utilization and also fall in the circulating amino acid. You don't have enough in, uh, uh, glucose. So then alanine uh, is being utilized for the gluconeogenesis and this is called a substrate deficiency syndrome. So hormonal concentration during pregnancy. Uh, normal pregnancy from say, almost 24 weeks onwards, you are increase in the in the hormones like estrogen, progesterone, and most important as human placental lectrogen, which is almost on their peak after 24, 28 weeks. And then subsequently, because of this counter regulation, you have increase in the insulin levels, hyperinsulinemia, which is again at the, their peak after 24 to 20, in, in 24 to 28 weeks. And that is why classically GDM said that it, it comes after 24 weeks of pregnancy. And this is a glucose level again. This is normal during pregnancy, insulin, hyperinsulinemia. But the glucose level remains normal. So your beta cells should be able to supply enough insulin to keep you, you glycemic even during pregnancy. That is what is glucose challenge test uh, when it is negative. So carbohydrate metabolism, you, this is after 28 weeks, you have HPL, prolactin and other. There's a diabetogenic stress and which again causes uh, uh, causes increased hepatic glucose production, causes hyperglycemia. And this is a mixed meal test which will show you glucose, non-pregnant state, pregnant state, this is the extra insulin required from the, say, uh, from the beta cells. If you fail to do that, you develop GDM. And of course, the glucagon is also the extra insulin secreted in response to meal, blunts the gluconeogenic uh, potential of the glucagon during the immediate post prandial state and that spares that ingested amino acid for the fetal excess. After disposal of the carbohydrate, then you have alpha cells start uh, 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 causing hyperaminoacidemia, acidemia, could stimulate enough gluconeogenesis and uh, which is utilized for the mother. And this is, uh, uh, this is again uh, almost the repetition here. Accelerated uh, uh, starvation in the fasting state their baby is being continuously fed. Mother is taking meals intermittently. And that is why your fasting blood glucose typically remains on a lower side. So maternal metabolism shifts from catabolism when exogenous fuel is not available, using fat as a fuel and placental hormone help in, in the shift and uh, uh, causes accelerated starvation in the morning hours. And then uh, 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 and it's, that fuel is utilized for the baby. The combination of enhanced beta cell response to glucose and preserved alpha cell response to amino acid leads to facilitated anabolism from the mixed meal. Now this is a transfer. If you just talk about the nutrient transfer, glucose get traveled from the mother to the fetus by facilitated diffusion. So higher is the blood glucose, it goes inside without any uh, any carrier or any transporters required to be transporting this particular fuel to the fetal side. So that is why glucose enters without any hindrance, without any barrier to the fetus directly. Amino acid also does the same thing. Ketone bodies also directly transfers into the fetal circulation. That's why diabetic ketoacidosis is a detrimental to the baby, almost 30 to 50 percent mortality if the mother develops diabetic ketoacidosis during the during pregnancy. And this is triglyceride is partial, but insulin doesn't cross the placenta, glucagon doesn't cross the placenta, all oral drugs they cross the placenta. So this is non-pregnant state, insulin secretion, insulin resistance almost equal. As you become pregnant, insulin secretion increases, insulin resistance parallelly increases and you glycemia is being maintained. There's increased inflammatory markers and, uh, and leptin adiponectin is reduced. And this is being uh, insulin secretion matches with the insulin resistance and maintains the glycemia of the pregnancy. But what happens in GDM? You have in, this is the normal pregnancy, insulin secretion, insulin resistance, but unfortunately, insulin secretion is not enough to combat this insulin resistance and they develop hyperglycemia. So pathophysiology, insulin indu induces a progressive change in the maternal carbohydrate metabolism as the pregnancy advances. Now, this is a wonderful diagram which will actually depict you. Insulin glucose is being maintained from 76 to 80 throughout, but the insulin level is growing gradually up 
as the blood glucose is going up to maintain euglycemia and this this is how it is supposed to be normal pregnancy would get which get disturbed in when you don't have enough beta cells so concern is gdm represent a bit, uh, detection of the chronic beta cell dysfunction so those women do develop, develop gdm you should presume their beta cells are already diseased so gdm basically can be defined as a stage in evolution of type 2 diabetes see how wonderfully author has coined it it's a it's a, it's a one of the one of the uh, you know test or i told you are a treadmill test that in future we are going to get develop cardiovascular disease where tmt is positive same is the case here there is something new which is now uh, uh, is, is, is now uh, growing up across the data as per as intestinal microbiomes and associated functional changes in pregnancy and they might also be responsible for gdm i am not going to go in detail of it what are the outcome trials we have we have two important trial was acois trial and this acois trial has classically shown that the treatment of gdm reduces serious perinatal morbidity and and may also improve the women's health related quality of life so this for the first time in the world this australian study and they have shown that glycemic control is important before that there used to be debate debate whether we should really treat gdm women or not but after this that that those debates have been stopped then came hapo study again 2008 and this study again has good number of patients they have classically shown and they're showing the conclusion it has indicated that there is strong continuous association of maternal glucose levels below those diagnostic of diabetes with increased birth weight and increasing cordless uh, serum c peptide levels what this mean there is no cut off still 90 120 is a consensus there is no still cut off from hapo study but there is continuous the moment blood glucose goes up there is hyperinsulinemia there is glucose intolerance it goes up and that is how we should be looking into it so you have underweight less than 2.5 more than 3.5 macrosomia both of them are at risk to develop diabetes in the future life pregnancy as a major adaptation of physiology including glucose regulatory and cardiovascular disease pregnancy is considered a stress test of the beta cells of the pancreas and it can uncover uncovers the prediction to later diabetes development in gdm in these women gdm also predicts an increased cardiovascular risk later in the lives of affected mothers and there's a window of opportunity and we all should need to be focusing on this a screening diagnosis very brief every people should not ask this question indian women are at 11 times increased risk of developing gdm and every woman in our country by government of, of india guidelines dipsy guidelines all other guidelines they said that every woman should be screened at the first opportunity in when they come to the anc clinic for the first time and again to be repeated minimally in the third trimester or ideally first second and third trimester if the first is negative you should do it second time and second is negative do it for the third time these are the ada and iadpsg guidelines nowadays ada also follows the iadpsg guidelines where they do fasting more than 92 1 hour more than 180 uh, or 2 hour more than 153 any one of them is positive they call it as gdm the government of india guidelines says 75 gram glucose can be given whether their woman is fasting or non fasting and get two hour test if it is more than 140 you call it as gdm but you also have a have have another category by dipsy but not by government of india guidelines that someone caught crossing 120 and re remaining below 140 can be called as a iggi gestational glucose intolerance so borderline cases even they need to be treated for even the uh, beta cell function declines within two years postpartum in these women and these women to be followed for for development of diabetes in future predicting postpartum you have to have see the see the risk profiles and uh, the, you uh, more more severe if the woman is requiring insulin therapy women has uh, high fa high fasting blood glucose they are likely to develop diabetes in future these are the risk factors if your one hour is more than 200 insulin ther requiring insulin therapy more bmi gestational weight gain uh, di diagnosed uh, uh, before 24 weeks uh, uh, weeks of pregnancy these are out of these four risk factors if your zero is a factor risk is low if you have four risk factor almost 68% uh, uh, of these women are likely to become diabetic in next 5 years and this is our own data where again we have shown almost the same thing which was published i don't want to go through it at this moment of time 
So in next 30 seconds, I have to just tell you no single period in human development provides a greater potential than the pregnancy for the long range payoff via a relatively short range period of enlightened, enlightened metabolic manipulation. See, we are the people, we can just do this work of say nine months. I, I'll add two months here and three months here, almost one year. So this one year uh, uh, a good attention towards a preconcept from preconception till delivery and you will be able to protect future generation from developing non-communicable diseases. That's the vision of Padma Shri, Dr. V. Shashaya, whose birthday is being now recognized as National GDM Day. Government of India is the only government in the country, in, in the world, which has recognized National GDM Day. Other countries have national, international or World Diabetes Day, but not National GDM Day. So you can imagine how much serious the Dipsy group and the government is for this. Public awareness is must for it. I'll just take 30 seconds, sir. And this is a Prega talk we started during my presidentship uh, in 2021-22. And we did, we have Indian constitution have 22 languages. And we conducted this session in all 22 languages during that period. The first cycle is, yeah, the first cycle is over and we started second cycle now. And the second cycle again was inaugurated. This is the, again, the second cycle started in Tamil because it, we, we, our Dipsy has, has its origin from, Tam, uh, from Tamil Nadu. And then the last one we did, uh, which was on uh, last, this Friday. So it is second and uh, first and the third Friday. So 20th September, we had the last one in Malayalam. So we have already finished 12 now. We are remaining with another 11, which will continue this year. So maybe this time I have not confused too much. Usually when I talk about diagnosis and screening, we have, I, I confuse you too much. And before I stop here, let me uh, give you best wishes and, and, and greetings for, uh, for the forthcoming Navaratra. Navaratra is a, is, 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 a, is a festival which I love the most, but unfortunately I have never seen Navaratra of Gujarat. So I appeal all of my colleagues they to, to please call me, force, force me to come for this meet here for, for one of the Garba celebration here in this uh, wonderful city of Ahmedabad. Thank you very much for patience listening. Thank